Good evening, my friends and fiends, my dear witches and warlocks and night owl supremes. It's a bit late, and to be a bit frank, I'm really glad we're wide awake here or nearabouts here at this magical hour together. Tonight's tale is a short tale, and it's a bit grim and a little bit gory, just so you know, be warned. And it's also the tale of someone who takes on all the emotional labor of everyone in their life. I'll be reading The Brothers Grimm's The Seven Ravens. There was once a man who had seven sons, but never a daughter, no matter how much he wished for one. That's kind of refreshing. At length, his wife had a child, and it was a daughter. The joy was great, but the child was sickly and small and so weak that it had to be baptized at once, because it was gonna die. The father sent one of the boys to hurry to the spring to fetch water for the baptism. The other six boys ran along with them. As each strove to be the first to fill the jug, it fell into the spring. There they stood and did not know what to do. None of them dared to go home. When they did not come back, the father grew impatient and said, they have forgotten all about it in a game of play, the wicked boys. Soon he grew afraid lest the child should die without being baptized and he cried out in anger, I wish the boys were all turned into ravens. Hardly was the word spoken before he heard a whirring of wings in the air above his head. He looked up and saw seven coal black ravens flying high and away. The parents could not recall the curse, and though they had grieved over the loss of their seven sons, they comforted themselves somewhat in their dear little daughter, who soon grew to be strong and every day more beautiful. For a long time, she did not know that she had had brothers. Her parents were careful not to mention them before her, but one day she chanced to overhear some people talking about her and saying, that maiden is certainly beautiful, but really to blame for the misfortune of her seven brothers. Then she was much troubled and went to her father and mother and asked if it was true that she had had brothers and what became of them? The parents did not dare to keep the secret any longer and said that her birth was only the innocent cause of what happened to her brothers. But the maiden laid it daily to heart and thought that she must deliver her brothers. She's really gonna take a lot on there. She had no peace and rest until she set out secretly and went forth into the wide world to seek them out and to set them free. Let it cost what it might. She took nothing with her but a little ring belonging to her parents as a keepsake, a loaf of bread against hunger, a little pitcher of water against thirst, and a little chair as provision against weariness. So she's gonna sleep sitting up. And now she went continually onward, far, far to the very end of the world. That's far. Then she came to the sun, but it was too hot and terrible and devoured little children. Hastily she ran away into the moon, but it was far too cold and also awful and malicious. And when it saw the child, it said, I smell, I smell the flesh of men. On this she ran away swiftly and came to the stars, which were kind and good to her, and each one of them sat down in its own little chair. But the morning star rose and gave her a drumstick of chicken and said, If you have not that drumstick, you cannot open the glass mountain, and in the glass mountain are your brothers. The maiden took the drumstick, wrapped it carefully in a cloth, and went onward again until she came to the glass mountain. The door was shut and she thought she would take out the drumstick, but when she undid the cloth, it was empty and she had lost the good star's present. What was she to do now? She wished to rescue her brothers and had no key to the glass mountain. The good little sister took out a knife, cut off one of her little fingers, and put it in the door, and succeeded in opening it. Cost what it may, I see, cost what it may. Oof, that is definitely a grim thing. Once she had got inside, a little dwarf came to meet her who said, My child, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers, the seven ravens, she replied. The dwarf said, The Lord Ravens are not at home, but if you wish to wait here until they come, step in. Thereupon the little dwarf carried the raven's dinner in on seven little plates and in seven little glasses. Oh, this is like a reverse Snow White. The little sister ate a morsel from each plate and from each little glass she took a sip. But in the last little glass, she dropped the ring which she had brought away with her. Suddenly, she heard a whirring of wings and a rushing through air, and then the little dwarf said, Now the Lord Ravens are flying home. Then they came, and wanted to eat and drink, and looked for their little plates and glasses. Then they said one after the other, Who has eaten something off of my plate? Who has drunk out of my little glass? It was a human mouth. Pretty Goldilocks, pretty Snow White. And when the seventh came to the bottom of the glass, the ring rolled against his mouth. He looked at it and saw that it was the ring belonging to his father and mother and said, God, grant that our little sister may be here and that we shall be free. That, that seems like a big logic leap. Oh, this is my parents' ring. Maybe my sister's here to free me. Anyway, when the maiden, who was standing behind the door watching, heard that wish, she came forth 
And on this, the ravens were restored to their human form again, and they embraced and kissed each other and went joyfully home. The end. But like, okay, so the young girl overhears some random woman in town saying how it's all the young girl's fault for her brother's deaths, which it's not. So the girl takes it upon herself to confront her parents about it, and they tell her, that's ah, also not her fault, but she can't sleep because night after night, she thinks it's her fault that she was born a sickly child and was about to die when her brothers accidentally dropped a bucket of water into a well, and her father accidentally cursed and whoops, it came true. Somehow that's her fault. Okay, uh, I wonder why we internalize so much of taking on other people's emotional labor. Jeez, wow. Yeah, not only does she do that and blames herself and tries to make it right, which is super heroic, sure. She can't rest until it's sorted out, so I guess if you can't sleep, you gotta do something about it. And hey, that's why we're here right now. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tale, and I hope you get some sleep or stick around and enjoy another tale. Alright, I'll speak to you soon in the next video, and until then, good night.